John 5. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now there is in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralysed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him laying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And so the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is a Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, Who is this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something else may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews it was Jesus who had made him well. So because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jews persecuted him. Jesus said to them, My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. For this reason, the Jews tried all the harder to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Jesus gave them this answer. I tell you the truth. The son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing, because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all he does. Yes, to your amazement, he will show him even greater things than these. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the Son, that all may honour the Son, just as they honour the Father. He who does not honour the Son, does not honour the Father who sent him. I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. I tell you the truth, a time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself and he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this. For a time is coming when who, all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good will rise to live, and those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. By myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. This is the word of the Lord. Stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. They are extraordinary words that Jesus spoke to the lame man who was lying beside the pool at Bethesda. Bethesda was a pool very close to the heart of Jerusalem and surrounded uh, by many other people who were also lame, unable to walk with various difficulties and sicknesses. 
This was the place where they collected. This was the place that they went day by day. This was the place where they would have been begging for money in order to help them. Stand up, pick up your mat and walk. It was an extraordinary thing for Jesus to say on so many counts. Partly, for example, by the hopelessness of the man. Uh, this man had been paralyzed or something similar for some 38 years, probably coming to this place for 38 years. And what was his only hope? His only hope was in a superstition that perhaps if an angel came down and stirred the waters of the pool, and if he was the first one into the pool, then he would be cured. Hope only in a superstition. It was an extraordinary thing for Jesus to say also because it does not seem that this man had faith. He's not like the blind man sitting outside of Jericho when Jesus passed by and the blind man called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The blind man had some understanding there of just who Jesus was. In fact, though he was blind, there was a sense in which by faith he could see. He could see who Jesus really was. This man sitting beside the pool, lying beside the pool, was not in that category at all. He did not understand who Jesus was. And Jesus bowled up to him and chose him, it seems, almost at random. Do you want to get well? Well, of course the man wanted to get well. Stand up, pick up your mat and walk. And immediately the man felt in his legs the muscles working. He was restored. He stood up. And what did he do? He picked up his mat and he walked out as far as we can tell, without so much as a thank you to Jesus. At least it's not recorded. He didn't understand who Jesus was, and he didn't um, ask who Jesus was at this point. That becomes very clear a little later in the story. So what is going on here? And the answer is in the Sabbath, and it's in the mat. You see, Jesus didn't have to ask this man to carry his mat. He could have just said, stand up and walk. He didn't. He said, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. And he did that on a Sabbath. Now, according to the Jewish elders and according to all the Jews, to carry a burden on the Sabbath, that was work. That was to break the Sabbath. As the man walked out from the pool of Bethesda, carrying his mat, he would have been the only one carrying a burden. No one else would have been carrying more than a handbag. This man stood out amongst the Jews. And so very quickly, the Jews came to him and said, why are you carrying your mat? It's the Sabbath. The man replied, the man who made me well told me, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Who was this man who told you to pick up your mat and walk? And the answer was, I don't know. He still didn't know who Jesus was. What an extraordinary thing. But Jesus found him a little later in the grounds of the temple. And he said to the man, be careful, stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. Well, what's the worst thing that could happen to a man in this situation? It is, of course, judgment. And Jesus is going to proceed to talk about judgment in just a very short time. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. What is fascinating here is that this man obviously had not stopped sinning. He had not repented. He'd not turned to put his faith in God. He hadn't changed. In fact, he was an illustration of a world that does not receive the word, that does not receive Jesus, even though Jesus has come into the world to save it and to make it whole. Pick up your mat and walk. It was the Sabbath. So what was Jesus doing? This man was an object lesson in the Sabbath. What is the meaning of the Sabbath? And so the man turned on Jesus. He went up to the temple authorities and he betrayed him. He betrayed the one who had just healed him. He went and told them it was Jesus who commanded me to take up my mat and walk. And so the temple authorities then turned and persecuted Jesus. Now, this was the opportunity then for Jesus to explain the true meaning of the Sabbath to the Jews in Jerusalem. And his explanation went like this. My father is always at work, even to this day, and I too am working. This is Jesus' lesson in the meaning of the Sabbath, in the true meaning of redemption. We're going to have a look at that now. 
My father is always at work to this very day, and I too am working, said Jesus. What did he mean? He's speaking about the Sabbath. Now, in the Old Testament, it's very clear that God created the world six days. On the seventh day, he rested. And so the Sabbath is about rest. But it's not only about rest. It's about rest when all the work is done. The work of creating was done and God said, behold, it's good. It's very, very good. And he blessed that seventh day because everything was complete. When do you rest? Well, I want to suggest to you, you rest when the work is done, don't you? If I spend a day gardening, I've mowed the lawns, I've done some weeding. And then when all of that work is done, I can sit in the sunshine quietly and rest and look at the work that I have completed. That's very, very satisfying. God rests when everything is complete, when everything is whole. But if Adam had been lying on a mat back in the garden, paralyzed, God would not have said, it's very, very good. And the work would not have been complete because Adam and the world that God created would not have been whole. And so it is now that as God looks at the world that he created, it is not complete, it's not whole, it needs to be restored. And so there is work still to be done. It is the work, of course, of restoration. It's what the Bible calls redemption. And this is the work that the Father does even to this very day. And this is the work that Jesus is doing. Indeed, this was the reason that he came into the world to do the work of the Sabbath. That is to bring people back into God's rest to restore them and to make them whole once more. So as Jesus restored this man to health and to strength, um, as he told him to stand up, pick up his mat and walk, what he's actually done is he's made this man into an object lesson. As he carries his mat, it's like he's carrying a placard which is declaring to Jerusalem and to the Jews, Jesus is the one who does the work of the Sabbath. Jesus is the one who restores all things and makes them whole once more. It's all about the mat. This man is a walking billboard um, speaking about Jesus. It's all about the work of the Sabbath. Now, Jesus is going to bring that work of the Sabbath to completion with the cross for our forgiveness, with the resurrection, which gives us new life by his intercession at the right hand of God as he brings us to God, forgiven, restored and whole, finally in a new creation. Jesus is the one who is doing the work of the Sabbath. So Jesus said, my father is always working to this very day and I also am working. And what he's doing here is declaring something which opens up great mystery for us. That is the mystery of the relationship between the father and the son in the Trinity. God the father and Jesus the son. And what Jesus is saying is that they work together. It's a little bit like a job share arrangement. If I was to say to you, um, the prime minister and I are actually job sharing. We, we do that work of governing in Australia together. Then effectively what I'm saying is I am on the same plateau. I'm on the same level as the prime minister. We're sharing this work together. And that's what Jesus is saying here. The father is always at work to this very day. And I also am working. We're doing the same work. Now, Jesus actually explains it, though, this way. The son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. The father loves the son and shows him all that he does. So while they were one in all that they do, it's not an equal relationship. The son is, uh, we could say, subordinate to the father. He puts himself and ranks himself below the father in this work. The father loves the son and shows him all that he does. Jesus, in turn, does not act independently of his own initiative, but rather Jesus does exactly what the father shows him. And he does only what he sees from the father. Now, for this reason, Jesus is the perfect revelation of the father. He is the glory of the father. He is the word of the Father. He reveals the Father to us, even to the point where later in the Gospel of John, Jesus can say, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So Jesus does only what he sees from the Father. That is to say, 
by his work and the things that he does, Jesus is the perfect revelation of the Father. So we need to ask ourselves now, what is this work that Jesus does? What is the work of the Sabbath? What is this work of redemption and restoration? And the answer is that Jesus performs two resurrections, not just the one, but two resurrections. The first resurrection is spiritual. Jesus comes to the dead, the spiritually dead, and raises them to new life. The second resurrection is physical, that is, in the future, Jesus will raise not just some people, but all people to judgment. So let's have a think about those two uh, resurrections as Jesus teaches us about them. First of all, the spiritual resurrection. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He has crossed over from death to life. Indeed, the day is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the word of the Son of God and live. What's he referring to? Well, the answer is he's referring to new birth or birth from above. He's referring to that moment when a person first believes the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That glorious moment where it dawns on us that the Bible is actually true, that Jesus has actually come from God that his crucifixion was for the forgiveness of our sins, his resurrection to give us eternal new life. This is the moment of new birth, and this is the spiritual resurrection. And we should make no mistake about it. Jesus is telling us that we are all dead spiritually, separated from God until that moment where we hear the word of the gospel, the word of the Son of God. This is the first resurrection. The second resurrection is quite different. It's physical. And it's not an event that is taking place now, as with the first resurrection. But the second resurrection is a future event. This is the day when Christ will return and raise all people from the dead. And all people will be raised to judgment. This conforms simply to traditional Jewish belief that there would come a day when God will judge the living and the dead. This is what we affirm in our creeds. The surprise, the great surprise that Jesus gives us here is that the Father has entrusted all judgment to the Son. The Father judges no one. And the Father has entrusted all judgment to the Son in order that all people would acknowledge and honor Him. This is going to come as a big surprise one day to many, many people. It'll be a big surprise to the Jews, won't it, when they see that Jesus is the judge. It'll be an even bigger surprise to the Muslims. But it will be a surprise to the atheists and all, all who have denied Jesus Christ. As the Apostle Paul says in Philippians, that day will come where every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. My prayer is that that day will not come as a surprise to you. Please do not let that happen. Please ensure that Jesus is your Lord and Savior before that day. Be a part of that first resurrection. Hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn and give your life to him. For if you have been a part of that first resurrection, then you have crossed over from death to life. The word crossed over, that phrase crossed over is marvelous. Uh, some time ago, I went trekking in Nepal. And one of the most amazing experiences in that trekking was the suspension bridges, which would cross great chasms with uh, waters tumbling uh, hundreds of meters below us as we walked across those suspension bridges. And they were astonishing because the suspension bridge could deliver us from one mountain, as it were, to another uh, with just... Um, a very short and easy walk. They were wonderful. But the much more wonderful thing is that, that Jesus himself enables us to cross over, not from one mountain to another, but from death to life, from an eternal judgment that goes on forever to an eternal life with Jesus and with the Father forever. Have you crossed over? I beg of you, if you have not yet crossed over, honour the Son by believing his word. This is what the Father wants. For the Father has handed all judgment to the Son in order that 
all would honor him just as they honor the Father. This is the way it is when one person loves another, is it not? If someone comes into my house, I want them to honor my wife. If they eat my wife's food, if they partake of my wife's hospitality, if they share the home which she has built, then I require them to honor my wife. I do not wish them to be rude to her. I do not want them to ignore her. Even if they honor me, that's of no value to me unless they also honor my wife. So it is with the father and the son. God wants us to honor the son whom he loves. And so he has handed all judgment to the son. Honor the son. And how should you honor the son? Honor the son by handing your life over to him, by believing, by affirming the gospel that he has spoken, his death for your forgiveness, his resurrection to eternal life, and as the judge of the living and the dead, his intercession before the Father so that you can live with the Father forgiven forever and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit so that you can know and understand these things. I am actually going to lead us now in a very brief prayer. It's the sort of prayer that you might pray if this was the first time that you would honor the Son by handing your life over to Him. And I want to invite you to join me in that prayer. It's a very personal prayer. Listen to the words as I say them first. Jesus, you have promised that whoever hears your word and believes the Father who sent you has crossed over from death to life. Please help me to believe and to trust you. Please forgive me and give me this gift of eternal life. Amen. Now, if that's a prayer that you can pray, then I'm going to invite you to join with me right now. I'll say it slowly that you can join in. Jesus, you have promised that whoever hears your word and believes the Father who sent you has crossed over from death to life. Please help me to believe, to trust you. Please forgive me and give to me this gift of eternal life. Amen. Now I want to assure you, if you have prayed that prayer sincerely, then you have crossed over from death to life. And Jesus has a hold on you to deliver you into an eternal life. Sabbath, an eternal rest with God the Father. This indeed is his work of the Sabbath. But please do not stop there. Please tell someone, a Christian, what you have done as you've put your faith and your trust in him. Seek guidance and help so that you can grow and mature in Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen.